The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation hereby called to order. And uh, yes, given that uh, a mere suspension was called at the previous hearing, there is no necessity to establish a quorum. And uh, we hereby call on Attorney Dana Alberto, Legislative Committee Secretary, to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons, of which there are quite a few. So please proceed, uh, Attorney Dana. Yung sa comment wala. Oo, sa kabilang. Thank you. So, uh, the technical glitch apparently solved for the moment. Uh, let's proceed. Uh, Attorney Dana, please call on our uh, resource persons and acknowledge the presence of the same. Good morning. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation would like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests, namely, from Commission on Elections, we have Chairperson George Irwin M. Garcia and Commissioner Ray E. Bulay, together with Executive Director Teopisto E. Elnas Jr., Attorney Rafael B. Olano, Director Divina E. Blas Perez. Good morning. Director John Rex C. Laudianco. Morning, Your Honor. Director Ephraim Q. Bagid. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Roseanne B. De La Cruz Reyes. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Eliza S. Sabili David. Okay. Miss Arifa M. Jamil. Mr. Fritz Michael O. Sales. 
Okay. From the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, we have Mr. Redentor Paolo M. Alegre Jr. Attorney Catherine Antti Limbonay Aldon. Mr. Edward Joseph D. Robleza I. From the ICT, we have Director Jocelyn Tendenilia. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. From DOST, we have Daniel Romulo Palm I Palma. Yes. Ma'am DALG sent a position paper. They sent also their regrets. Yes. Uh, but I'm not in receipt of the DALG. They just they just sent it yes. uh, this All right. morning. If I could just be provided with that shortly. Thank you very much. Uh, as we all know. Um the uh, last time our election laws were codified was way back in 1985 with the enactment of Batas Pambansa, uh, Bilang 881 or the Omnibus Election Code of the Philippines. After the 1987 constitution, several major changes followed the enactment of the Omnibus Election Code. We have Republic Act 6646, Electoral Reforms Law, the uh, Republic Act 6735, Initiative and Referendum Act, um, RA 7166, providing for synchronized national local elections and for local reforms. Then we had RA 7941, or the party list system, thereafter followed by 8189, the Voters Registration Act of 1996, RA 9006, the Fair Elections Act, RA 9189, or the Overseas Absentee Voting Act, as amended. It was in 1998 that uh, RA 8435, or the Automated Election Law, was amended, um, mandated the automated election system that changed the previously manual elections. Since the adoption of the AES, many laws have been superseded or amended. Given the need to update the existing laws and the various controversial experiences that have occurred, the government's use of automated elections, making the uh, electoral landscape unnecessarily contentious and contradictory, and um, thus failing to uphold the Constitution's mandate on ensuring fair, orderly, honest, peaceful, and credible elections, I filed Omnibus uh, uh, Senate Bill 179 to provide for a new code for elections in 2022. Since this is an election code, um, the committee will be hearing the same in parts so that we are able to parse the uh, rather hefty document um, coherently and comprehensively. And simultaneously, we shall be dealing with proposed bills pending before the committee that have the same subject matter. In addition, I enjoin the COMELEC also um, to add um, resolutions and other issuances from the constitutional body that may enrich and uh, clarify many of uh, the provisions um, hereby pending. We proceed with the uh, public hearing and um, as we know, the first topic that will be uh, dealt with is the uh, topic of the registration of voters. And this encompasses Senate Bill 179 by myself, the uh, registration of voters during the pre-election period, Senate Bill 572 by Majority Leader Joel Villanueva on uh, the use and implementation of an online system, Senate Bill 746 for the procedure of uh, registration during barangay elections, and uh, that's also by Joel Villanueva. So uh, I suppose we can begin with the uh, online registration acts, um, thereby numbered, as well as House Bill 7241, um, by uh, Speaker Ramualdez, also approved by the House last uh, March 6, and transmitted to the Senate the day after. So uh, perhaps we uh, can proceed with uh, voter registration online, not to preclude the personal filing of applications, the successful submission um, to be automatically registered, security measures, and... Um, efforts to uh, undertake 
the uh, elimination of the Hakot system or registration in bulk. Um, I think uh, there's also the uh, injunction in the House bill to prohibit the transfer of voters' registration within 120 days before a regular election, um, and also thereby providing acceptable proofs of residences as well. Um, the uh, pre-election period exercises also include the uh, section on the registration of SK, senior citizens, PWDs, and uh, others. So uh, we uh, will uh, undertake all of this. Um, I believe that uh, the COMELEC on its own, with its broad uh, rulemaking powers, has allowed COMELEC Resolution 10-715-2021 for online filing, reception, and processing of applications. Also, alternative and more convenient procedures for senior citizens, PWDs, and persons deprived of liberty. Satellite registrations were also allowed under COMELEC Resolution uh, 10868 of 2022, and change of name by reason of marriage um, also was undertaken by your resolution 10868 of 2022. So uh, already there's uh, been an effort clearly uh, both by the legislature as well as the uh, Constitutional uh, Commission to uh, rationalize and um, um, uh, modernize this efforts um, for pre-election. So perhaps the very first uh, question, during the recent presidential election, COMELEC resolved to adopt online filing. Um, and uh, we know that reception, processing of applications, reactivation, transfers, and so on were undertaken uh, online given the extremely high number of COVID cases during that difficult period. My question will be is whether COMELEC will be able to continue with the adoption of said online system um, in this uh, following elections. Um, I, uh, I assume that uh, the barangay elections in October are going to be the next following one. Is online registration going to be applicable for what we understand to be a manual exercise? Anyone from the COMELEC, uh, please? Good morning. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, as far as the COMELEC is concerned, online registration may not be uh, done by the commission uh, during the resumption of uh, the registration by February of next year. Uh, we, for the information of the body, uh, your honor, we conducted the continuing registration from December 12 to January 31 only in preparation for the Barangay and SK election. So if we are going to resume by February of next year in preparation for the 2025 election, uh, we would like to be very candid that uh, automated and online system of registration may not be possible simply because under Republic Act 8189, which is the present law on registration, voters will really still have to appear personally in our registration site in view of the, the biometrics that will be taken from these uh, voters, the, the fingerprint, the pictures, as well as the signatures, uh, uh, Your Honor. Likewise, the voters will be, uh, when they submit their application for registration, uh, this application should uh, all be under oath. And if we are going to use, for example, a smart cell phone <clears throat> for purposes of registration, Your Honor, if you're yes, uh, just to clarify, um, what I be, what I understand from the good chairman's uh, explanation is that um, for the meantime, online new registrations will not be accepted. But what about the uh, reactivation, correction of entries, uh, transfers, and so on? Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. Only for purposes of the new. Uh, you are correct, uh, Your Honor, Madam Chair. For purposes of the new voters, the online registration will not be uh, possible, but for purposes of reactivation and uh, such other, uh, for, for reactivation, for 
Yes, transfer, transfer we can, uh, we can correction of entries and so on, and virtual verification of identity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, but uh, the rest can be Yes, Your uh, Honor. Simply online. because we already have the database for this. Uh, Kaya nga eh. Kasi nandun na, di ba? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, ayusin na lang yung transfer, reactivation, correction, etc. Yes, Your Honor. So that will be utilized. Even for the barangay elections, itong... Uh, yes, Your Honor. We did already, Your Honor, for purposes of the 1.6 million new registrants and for the, likewise the transfers and the reactivated, we did uh, use already the database of the COMELEC. Yes. Okay. Um, you said that uh, you have continuing uh, registrations, but by February 2024, uh, this will be the uh, uh, listing for the 2025 election. Will the February 2024, just to clarify, be online also, or uh, is personal appearance required? For purposes of the February 2024, Your Honor, it will be personal appearance, Your Honor, of the voters in view of the present 8189 Republic Act 8180. However, in case there will be a law and, uh, uh, and the law will be passed within the period of, uh, from for within this year, then we will be able to implement, but they will still have to appear personally. New voters will still have to appear personally before the registration areas, either in the offices of the local COMELEC or in our satellite registration sites. So all new voters will continue to uh, um, be required to appear uh, personally in that case, uh, except that, uh, once again, transfer reactivation correction will be allowed online. Is that correct? That's correct, uh, Madam Chair. There is no system by which the SK, for example, already registered can be transferred to uh, the uh, um, regular voter system, given that they're already registered under the uh, SK election. Yes, Honor, we already have that uh, established system. We call that the migration from right. being the yes. SK to regular voter from 17 years old to becoming 18 years old, Your Honor. So, in fact, the uh, the automatic uh, migration of SKs can uh, occur online? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, there, there will be because we because uh, they, they know they don't need to go to Comelec yes. because we already have the database. We just migrate we'll automatically. Just migrate the fifteen to seventeen year olds who are turning eighteen. Yes, sure. Is that automatic? Is uh, the system capable of detecting age and uh, qualification? Yes, sir. Pwede di ba? Kasi yes. Dati ginagawa na yan. Yes, sir. We are so, doing that. So, whereas online registration for new voters presently is not allowed and is not uh, likely to be allowed um, unless a new law is passed, in fact, um, transfers, corrections, reactivations are already being undertaken for previous registrants, as well as a, uh, an automatic migration for SKs uh, who have become of age or turn 18 during that period. So yun dalawang yun, parehong online na? Yes, sir. Okay. So um, there is also a, a, a provision under um, um, Majority Leader's uh, Bill that uh, applicants be automatically informed of their successful submission, transfer, approval, etc. Um, online. Um, is that possible? Or should we adopt that? Yung, they will be automatically informed na na register na sila online. I suppose if you are completely online, that is in fact uh, 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 um, an automatic uh, response. Once you submit, di ba? So sabi naman accepted or not accepted kagad. Is that something that uh, we can input as well? Therefore. We, that's possible, Your Honor. We, we can uh, do that. We still we will uh, require our information technology department to to, to uh, come up with a system, a platform by which we can automatically inform these uh, online registered voters. Yes, uh, I would assume that uh, may submit lang naman yan. Eh? Once you submit, sasabihin, accepted or hindi. Or uh, perhaps is, uh, I don't know if uh, what is envisioned is uh, more... Uh, specific uh, acceptance um do you normally uh what is the procedure right now once a submission is made how is the uh, applicant informed that his uh, 
submission was accepted uh, sa we, personal appearance po. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, under Republic Act 8189, the all applica application for registration, reactivation, uh, for transfer will always have to be approved by the Election Registration Board. That's the first. Uh, whatever is the action of the ERB, there will be a notice uh, to be sent to the uh, respective voter, uh, the voter applicant. At the same time, all of the actions of the Election Registration Board will have to be posted in uh, conspicuous places, uh, Your Honor. But assuming that this is online, you are saying that the final step of the approval by the ERB will not be online. It will be a physical posting in uh, a uh, central area or at the precinct uh, location. Is that correct? That's correct, uh, Your Honor. So the automatic, um, the automatic information is not possible. This point, uh, we have not yet uh, uh, implemented such a system. But, however, Your Honor, this is a very good idea. If uh, online online application was done, then perhaps we can also do online for purposes of notice. Okay, uh, let's uh, please explore that possibility because it's contained in one of the drafts. Um, of course, uh, this is a major game changer as far as voter re registration is concerned. Is uh, the uh, COMELEC aware of any technology that will allow the online taking of biometrics, given that we just had that uh, splendid exhibition at Sofitel? I assume that one of the uh, um, technologies offered should at least uh, have addressed this issue. We saw several technologies during the exhibit. However, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, our problem really is in the implementation. The problem, Madam Chair, is uh, whether these voters uh, will, are the same voters who will give the biometrics. It's quite easy to get the images, even using a smartphone. You can just uh, click the, the phone, and then the, your images can be sent to the commission. But however, when it comes to biometrics, uh, it may happen that the voter who wanted to register online is not the same voter who gave to the commission the biometrics or the fingerprint. So it's, it's very difficult uh, administratively, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Are there any proposed solutions uh, give, uh, from the providers? The initial uh, proposal within the commission, Madam Chair, as, as per study of our ITD, is to use the smartphone. There is not no uh, we have not uh, that, that we have not arrived at any uh, study as far as using the modern technologies offered by providers simply because uh, again the cost the budgetary uh, requirement uh, may not be uh, uh, may not be shouldered by the commission at this point, Madam Chair. So right now, um, the uh, application of biometrics will once again have to be in person, um, given our uh, um, inability to secure the identities of uh, applicants. Is that correct? That's correct, Madam Chair, plus the administration of oath of the voters, uh, Your Honor. Yes, thank you. I uh, think uh, the Secretary has indicated that there are several uh, new um, resource persons here. Uh, please uh, acknowledge and recognize. From the Philippine Statistics Authority, we have Attorney Elizir P. Ambatali. From Lente, we have Attorney Rona Caritos. From KBP, we have Attorney Rudolf Hularbal and Mr. Roberto Nikdao. And from the OST, we have Mr. Ulysses Palmones. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much, gentlemen. We appreciate your uh, presence and we'll uh, be uh, going shortly to the topics upon which we need your expert opinion. There have been suggestions uh, that those who registered under PhilSys be allowed to authorize PhilSys to forward their biometrics data to COMELEC so that COMELEC will use this for voter registration. Um, the result is such that those who registered under PhilSys and agreed that their data be transferred will no longer have to physically appear. Is uh, this 
possible. And uh, does Comelec uh, feel that uh, security measures could be undertaken such that said transfer and sharing of information can be secured? For, uh, Madam Chair, for purposes of data sharing, we can always enter into data sharing agreement with uh, the PSA for purposes of the PLCs. However, Your Honor, unfortunately, with all due respect, they still have to appear before the COMELEC because all applications for registration must be under oath. And so even if, even if the, the PLC, uh, PSA will share with us the biometrics of these uh, voters, uh, and for those who got the, the Filsis ID, they still have to go to the COMELEC because their application will be useless without uh, being administered the, the oath. Um, we've utilized uh, online um, uh, oath taking uh, previously, uh, both here in the Senate as well as elsewhere. We're also aware that uh, the same has been utilized for contracts and uh, other um, um, legal documents. Is it not possible that the oath is administered online? We will, we will study, that's possible here, but we will study further the possibility simply because a voter who is registering in Bicol, Legaspi, for example, uh, will have, we, they, the, that voter will have to contact or the election officer of Bicol will have to contact that particular voter so that uh, at least uh, by using smartphone, the, uh, the oath can be administered. I think uh, the concern of the legislature is that uh, said online registration, uh, sharing the filsis will uh, really impact on uh, greater participation on the part of our OFW, uh, particularly those in uh, the maritime sector who have great difficulty uh, going back to their consulates and so on uh, once they're at sea. So uh, the concern was to allow at least certain sectors as soon as possible to um, take their oath as well as uh, register online as soon as possible. And uh, Philsys was one of the options uh, post since uh, the data has already been collated by another arm of government. Madam Chair, for purposes of, uh, rightly for purposes of the seafarers and the overseas voters, we can do that. We, we will definitely extend everything necessary and possible so that we'll be able to, to register our seafarers and uh, overseas Filipinos. Yes, kasi sa totoo lang uh, sa dami ng gastos natin sa OFW, sa laki ng hirap ng DFA at ng COMELEC para makaboto lahat, uh, napakaliit pa rin ng sektor ng OFW na nakakaboto. So, yun ang talagang sinasabi nila. Pabalik-balik daw sila. Una, para sa registration. Pagkatapos, para bumoto. Hirap na hirap daw sila talaga. Lalo na yung mga, ma, mga seafarers natin. So, yun ang hinahanap natin na may way sana na madagdagan yung kanilang paglalahok sa ating mga eleksyon. Yes, sir. Uh, Presently, we usually conduct video conferencing through Messenger and uh, Viber and such other uh, platform. And uh, definitely, we would like to reach out to our uh, seafarers. In fact, we will have our mall registration for seafarers. In fact, we will even set up polling precincts for seafarers even before they are deployed because there are several instances, Madam Chair, during our hearing, during the budget hearing for the COMELEC, it was raised by the Honorable Senator Tolentino yeah. that there were about several thousands of uh, seafarers who were not able to vote because That's they perfect. are still waiting. Uh -oh. We are going to set up polling places in, in certain areas so that they can be allowed to vote even if they are not yet deployed. Tama. Pero yun nga, dahil... Uh... Alam naman natin, napakagulo ng sitwasyon ng uh, deployment sa seafarers at OFW. Maraming uh, na-repatriate, tapos uh, umalis ulit, tapos na-repatriate, pabalik-balik sila. So sa kaguluhan nun, uh, sana mabigyan natin ng kaunting uh, tulong na makapag-register sila uh, online pagkat uh, yun yung issue na dalawang beses nga sila pupunta sa konsulado o sa anumang presinto, nahihirapan sila doon. Okay, so... Maybe we can uh, think about uh, ways and means. In the 2016 elections, the uh, COMELEC uh, chairperson at the time, James Jimenez, said that the employment of the HACOT system is prohibited only during voting at election day. But 
it is not prohibited during registration period. The uh, bill drafted by Senator Villanueva indicates that the HACOT system should also be prohibited at registration. What is the um, uh, stand of the COMELEC and uh, is the position um, evinced by uh, spokesperson Jimenez still the uh, policy? Hey, sorry. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, as far as the registration is concerned, we would like to register as many voters as possible. Whatever means necessary, uh, we would like to register these voters. It is our assumption, based on our experiences, that even if a voter uh, is transported en masse by a certain group or a certain candidate, future candidate, the voter will not, will not vote based on whether they were transported uh, and, and uh, helped during the registration. So, uh, sa amin po, hanggat makakapagparehistro sila, magparehistro po sila, whatever means necessary. But definitely, no, the, the policy remains the same. No hakot system during the voting because that will be tantamount to vote buying. But uh, there still remains no prohibition on uh, hakot uh, to register. Yes, Madam Chair. But Realistically speaking, on the ground, if I may share, uh, my experience simply is that uh, those in hard-to-reach upland remote areas, for example, where I come from in the Cordillera, um, appreciate the hakot uh, simply because uh, transportation is so meager and the uh, costs are so high. So, yung hakot mahirap yata, maiwasan yan. Mas lalong mahirap sa Visayas at Mindanao kung saan may mga maliliit na isla at ta talagang hindi sila makatawid ng dagat. So, um, I don't really know how uh, we can get around this. Uh, like you, I'm uh, concerned that yung hakot sa voting day, yun ang problematic. Pero yung uh, registration, parang serbisyo nga yun para sa mamamayan eh. Madam Chair, kahit po sa IPs, sa vulnerable sectors natin sa mga PWDs and senior citizens, when we were at uh, the commission was, uh, were at, uh, the members of the commission were at uh, Palawan, we saw for ourselves when these IP member communities, the dinala po sila en masse by the, by certain groups per barangay, kasi po, uh, 11 rivers po yung tatawirin nila eh. So sinusundo po talaga sila. Ito as, natutuwa po kami doon dahil at least po nakakapagparegister sila uh, kahit na sabihin po natin na hinahakot. But if there is a law, then we will have to implement uh, the law. The problem, Madam Chair, is... Nga, pero practically speaking, mas lalong hindi makakaboto yun pag hindi hinakot eh. Eh, kaso nga lang, May utang na loob na ba yun kapag uh, yung, yung aming uh, mga tribo, may utang na, na loob na ba kapag sinatal sila ng isang uh, kandidato o isang politiko? And that take note, uh, Madam Chair, with all due respect, papasok lang po yung absolute power na, or powers of the commission during the election period, which will happen either 120 days before the election. By that time, as uh, correctly mentioned by the Honorable Chair earlier, Wala na pong registration by that time. Eh. The registration will have to be to cut short prior, one, prior to 120 days before the election. In fact, po, the wordings of Republic Act 8189 is that uh, it's, it's uh, the power of the COMELEC whether to shorten or to lengthen the registration so long as it is not within the 120 days prior to the election. That's right. Um, in Yes. Uh -uh. You wanted to add something, sorry, uh, Attorney Elnas, please. Uh, in addition to that, uh, good morning, Your Honors. In addition, uh, in addition to that, Your Honors, uh, based on sa data, information, and experience namin, din inaakyat namin, binibigyan namin ng specific or identified or uh, sariling voting centers yung mga IPs natin na nasa bundok para hindi na sila hahakotin ng mga kung sino-sino man yung Well, hanggat kaya, pero hindi mo naman maaabot lahat eh. Talagang uh, yan lagi ang problema sa amin at uh, sa iba pang uh, mga probinsya. So, in some cities and municipalities, there were oppositions filed against hundreds of registrants on the ground of failure to prove or to comply with the residency requirement. How do we prevent this uh, in this case? Uh, do the election registration boards have the resources to actually accurately verify that the residents actually reside in the place where they seek to register? 
Kasi that's always been the issue uh, with the flying voters and uh, the alarm raised by the uh, register anywhere, vote anywhere plans. Uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, under Republic Act 8189, they will have to show only uh, a an official, a government issued uh, ID or any identification as duly recognized by law to prove residency, such as uh, postal ID, senior citizens ID, student ID for purposes of the younger ones, and uh, driver's license and or uh, gun ban or gun license licenses. So. Yun lang po yung requirements, unless merong uh, kasama yung tao, lalo na po sa Register Anywhere program or project, may kasama yung tao na magsasabi na taga dito po talaga yun o, o siya. Uh, admittedly, yun po yung uh, defect and problem din ng ating registration. Easily, anybody can produce a procure a card to show na ito po yung address niya. And, oh, uh, lalo ngayon, pagkarami-rami ng card, may senior citizen, may PWD, apakaraming card, tapos uh, magkakaroon pa ng solo parent card. So, maski anong card, halos eh, makukuha mo. Ang problema dyan, anong ginagawa by way of information doon sa mga daan-daang registrant na ino-objectionan sa COMELEC? What do you do with all those cases that uh, allege that there's been a failure to prove residency? <laughs> Uh, Madam Chair, yes. What happens to those cases and how do you prove or disprove uh, the same? Yung mga election officers po namin, election assistants, kasama yung mga casuals, they usually go around pagkami application applicants and uh, verify uh, as to whether these voters are indeed residents of this place. For example, Madam Chair, in San Juan, there was a complaint uh, it, there was even a petition filed before the COMELEC, and I, we, I'm, I will not be able to explain further in view of the, 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 the sub-judicial rule, but there was a complaint as, that these voters are actually not residents of this place simply because they, gi they gave only one address. Several hundreds, hundreds uh, of them uh, gave only one address, and so the election officer was uh, 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 verified. The, the the truthfulness as to whether they indeed are located in that place, and they found out that these persons are located in in a compound uh, with several shelters. So there's only one address. Ganon din po yung before na reklamo sabi po do sa likod ng LRT sa may Pasay, uh, isa daw po yung address. Sung makita po kasi ay ur ay uh, uh, Yung mga, the, the executive director went there uh, and nakita niya isa po talaga address sapagkat isang compound po yun ng mga uh, settlers. So uh, talaga pong isa lang address. So yung may mga ganong instances po, uh, we cannot easily say and judge whether these persons are actual, actual residents or not. Those who are opposing, they will have to go to COMELEC, file the opposition, and the election registration board will have the final say. If I may, uh, Your Honor, as a former practitioner, Maybe we can also look into the composition of the election registration board. The oh. ERB is composed of three members, uh, Madam Chair. First is the election officer of the area. Second is the civil. Sorry, the election. The officer. election officer of the municipality or yes. city. Second, the civil registrar, and third is the supervisor of DepEd. I see. And uh, most often there are complaints that uh, the members are politicized. Well, there are Special. employees, no, of the local government. Uh, the civil register, yes, Your Honor, and then of course the supervisor of the teacher, all the oh, ed is within still the LGU. So they will still have to vote by majority. If you uh, needed to recommend an expansion or perhaps a change in the said composition, what would it be? Anong mas maigi? Sino yung mas uh, uh, Ano ba sasabihin natin ang, um, ang mas detached or uh, less politicized or definitely not an employee of the incumbent LGU? We should include a citizen's arm uh, in the area as, uh, as duly accredited by the, by the commission. Right. And likewise, political parties, either from right or left, uh, there, 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 there should be representation in the election registration board. Yes, I think that's a good suggestion. I think uh, mahirapan rin sila mag-verify 
nung actual registre ng uh, actual residents kasi iilan lang sila at nakapako sila sa opisina sa totoo lang yung mga trabaho ng civil registrar at ng teacher eh hindi naman maligalig yun na uh, sa kalsada na malalaman lahat ng address ng bawat botante Madam Chair yes uh, correct I would like to cite an example a very quick one in Antipolo there were about only about 400 less than 500,000 registered voters and the Comelec has only two election assistants and one election officer and that's why so it's very difficult really for our people to even verify the the, the, the truthfulness of the addresses of our of these prospective voters yes I think Commissioner Bulay might have an idea here to help us uh, madam thank you I would like to, first I would like to thank the Honorable Chairperson for having the courage to do this thing, especially it's vintage 1985 and no less than her own father crafted the law. It is, I find it very amazing that there was no attempt to change the law. Even presidential decrees that there was no attempt to amend it. I find it very amazing. Uh, on the question of cases filed moto proprio by the COMELEC on double registration, transfer of registration, there was, there's this present problem which Chairman Garcia instructed my office to put a system to help our own EBAD. Ma'am, the complainant, who will be the complainant? Will it be the director of EBA? But then she will not be, have, she cannot do anything anymore because these cases, currently we, we already have 2,000, I think if I'm not mistaken, 2,000 plus cases all over the country. Now if you file uh, cases against these people, who will be the complainant? And who, who will be your witness, the first registration or the EO? where the second registration was paid. So there is no actual system there. That's why I am really, Madam, very much happy. In the law you're trying to, you are, we're trying to craft for us because it's, although it's 978 pages with 11 articles <laughs> on the COMELEC, Article 3, we did divide it into people knowledgeable enough. We would like to thank the Honorable Senator for her guidance, aside from her sponsorship, and giving us the chance to explain the side. This does not only come from the main office, Madam Chair. We have people in the field who, who has comments consolidated. But I do think we cannot finish this month because I think we need another month, madam. But all these questions which you're propounding are very practical and on point. So, so, yeah. so, so, so permit us to take note of all this, especially the group of Chairman Garcia here who, who he brought. They're, they're all there in the, in the committee, That's but right. we have slow people. They're very good and they're all lawyers and they're all having the problem of this Thank you. so basically if we be given uh, at least two months more from from this month we will be able to finish a complete draft have it submitted to the unbank for their approval madam before being sent Yes. To your office. Yes. Commissioner Bulay, thank you very much. And uh, we really need to work together on this. Uh, at the end of the day, the expert on uh, elections and electoral reform is still the COMELEC. And we always defer to you and your experience and wisdom. Um, it's important that uh, the field practitioners and officers are consulted because uh, they confront the uh, larger number of the problems in implementation, as mentioned by Chairman Garcia. Eh, hindi naman namin naintindihan lahat ng uh, pasikot-sikot uh, ng mga problemang to. Bumabagsak na lamang sa amin kapag may suliranin ng malaki. So, kinakailangan talaga solusyonan sa lalong madaling panahon. Thank you for that.
And uh, I intend uh, to put uh, this towards a technical working group in any case where it can be more freewheeling and uh, we can hammer together some language uh, that's appropriate, uh, liberal enough so that uh, the COMELEC um, can exercise its broad-ranging uh, rulemaking power and also stringent enough that we still abide by the uh, spirit and uh, policy of law. Attorney Elnas, please. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, dagdag ko lang, ma'am, doon sa issue on preventing uh, non-resident uh, individuals who will register in particular area, ma'am. No? Uh, just in case makakalusot sila sa ERB hearings, uh, yung mga citizens arm ng COMELEC are there for us. They are very much willing to file exclusion proceedings before the court. But the problem is that there is a corresponding uh, financial uh, burden on their part when they filed this petition for exclusion cases before the municipal trial courts. So with that, uh, hindi na sila, umaayaw na sila ng file because the courts are asking filing fees for each and every voter or for each and every petition that they will file against this uh, or uh, these uh, voters who wanted to register in an area where they are not actual residents, Your Honor. That's so, correct. That's another uh, consideration uh, because of the uh, onerous burden of uh, yes. fees for every single complainant or alleged spurious registrant. Tama. So, ano bang dapat gawin doon? Uh, uh, your Honor, if uh, it will be incorporated in the law requiring uh, the courts to dispense with the filing fees that would... Is there a uh, way to shorten uh, the procedure na yung COMELEC na lang mag-decide, hindi kailangan dalhin sa korte? Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, with your kind permission, the right to vote is all is a constitutional right and therefore it's always judicial in character. Na nga eh. The only way by which But you also have quasi-judicial powers in many, many cases that have annul... been exercised. Yes, Madam Chair, we can annul the, the list of voters, but of course there will still be procedure. But when it comes to individual voters, uh, the, the courts will have the final say. Uh, so the only thing we can do is really uh, urge the courts to waive in all the cases possible the uh, filing fees? Yes, Madam Chair, if it will be included in the law, then definitely the courts will have to follow and there will be no filing fee. Because this is, an, is, this is a public interest case. And this being a public interest case. Yes, I agree, Bo. You can make a good case for that. Yes, that uh, in fact, this is really public interest and uh, they're exercising their right to suffrage. shouldn't be charged and it shouldn't be burdened with uh, additional fees and charges. And Madam Chair, if we're going to likewise change the law for purposes of, their, of records, we'd like to request likewise to strengthen the election registration board. They are receiving 1,000 pesos honoraria. Right. That was the other consideration. So that maybe that. we can increase the honoraria for the election registration board members. They are screening thousands of applicants for registration and receiving only 1,000 pesos. So maybe we can increase even by 5,000. Receive 1,000 for what? For the entire duration? Uh, yeah, during the period that they will, they will uh, convene for purposes of uh, of deciding whether to approve or reject the application for registration. Which usually takes how long? Uh, uh, three days. Yeah, matagal-tagal din yan eh. Depending up. Pag malaki o maliit yung yes, lugar, pero... Yes, uh, Your Honor. Minsan matagal eh. Uh, it, de it depends on the number of uh, voters. Sometimes, uh, and if there are objections, if there are objections. Basta natin, alin yung average size, including Metro Manila na and the big cities. The three, three to five days, uh, Your Honor. Uh, and the entire, uh, that's 1,000 for the entire duration. If the applicants uh, is less than 1,000, it's 1,000 pesos. But if up to 2,000, that's 1,500 pesos. Nakakaloka siya. Okay. If it is 2,000 up to 3,000, it's 2,000 pesos. And if it is 4,000, it's 2,500. And if it is 4,000, it's 3,000 pesos, Madam Chair. So it's a high of 3,000 pesos. Uh, 
already there. Okay, so I think uh, these are considerations that uh, were not anticipated in the uh, bills concerned, but we need to take them up in the uh, in the TWG because they are the realities on the ground. And already the chair has mentioned rightly that the ERB's uh, three members may perhaps be inadequate or ill-equipped or uh, worse yet, uh, hardly qualified to judge on the uh, residency and should be assisted, therefore, by citizens' arms, political parties, both uh, uh, opposition and administration aligned. Um, secondly, that in fact, uh, according to Commissioner Bulay, which is uh, correct, there are uh, procedural issues until today. We are not clarified as to who is the actual complainant and if the first or the second uh, uh, complaint will uh, be the uh, basis. Um, thirdly, uh, Attorney El Nas, uh, just to, um, to round up, uh, the uh, financial burden of uh, filing fees in court are onerous and difficult. And fourthly, once again from the chairman, that in fact the ERB is uh, um, provided with very, very little wherewithal to actually go around given their uh, stipends of only 1,000 to 3,000 pesos for hundreds of thousands in certain cases um, of uh, voter applicants. So thank you. We proceed. If that's all right, this will all have to go to a TWG in any case. And I'd like to proceed at this point to uh, the next item on uh, the agenda. And uh, that is um, the uh, issue of election and campaign periods, campaign and uh, election expenditures. Um, the laws concerned, well, the items concerned are um, the um, uh, chapter three in the omnibus draft, Senate Bill 179. We also have uh, Senate Bill 1157 uh, regarding the authorized expenses that I also filed. Also, uh, Senate Bill 1159 uh, amending the Fair Election Act as well. So these are the uh, things that uh, we need to deal with. Um, the uh, agreement in the 18th Congress was to retain the present provisions on election and campaign periods, except that for Barangay and SK officials, the campaign period was shortened from 15 days to 10 days. Tama po ba yun? Okay lang yun, we leave it at that, no? Kasi wala namang issue dyan, eh. Yes, Madam Chair. And sure. then, um, the uh, campaign and election propaganda and Article 9 of the new Omnibus Election Code require that during the period of the election, media outlets, and we are grateful for the appearance of uh, Kapisanan as well as the uh, KBP uh, here. And this had to do with the... Uh, required discounts on um, media outlets, uh, TV at 50%, radio at 40%, pre print media at 10%. The uh, bills provide that the discounts shall be based on the average published rates, negotiated rates, or any other set of rates, whichever is lowest in the last three calendar years prior to the election. So um, these are the concerns and um, we uh, are aware that uh, these are the uh, things that uh, we need to do straight away. Although, as I recall, in 2019, for example, the issue was that uh, whereas the media outlets were prepared to comply, the IRR um, arrived from the COMELEC only three weeks or even later before the actual election date. So it was very late, but that's also because um, the law was then rather new, I think. So uh, there was that issue. So I was uh, concerned uh, uh, about that. Firstly, the uh, discounts and the uh, implementation of the same. And then... Uh, with regard to the propaganda, the inclusion of internet, mobile, print, and broadcast, and the requirement that every official register their official, every candidate pala, um, register their official social media accounts, social media pages, 
etc., and that only these registered accounts would run electoral ads and boost or promote their electoral posts. So uh, there was also some uh, concern about providing criteria for allowable micro-targeting ads. Given the state of our technology, is any of this uh, practical? or implementable. Yes, Chairman Garcia, please. Madam Chair, uh, with all due respect and with your kind indulgence, I would like to, uh, uh, first, as far as the comic is concerned, we have a very, there's a problem when it comes to campaign finance, campaign periods, and and such, uh, and the campaign expenditures. And it starts with the case of Rosalinda Piñera versus the commission election. In the case of Piñera versus Comelec, the Honorable Justice Carpio, uh, stated uh, and interpreted Section 15 of uh, Republic Act 8436, amended by Republic Act 9369, that all those who will file their candidacies during the period of the filing of the candidacy simply because the, uh, and it's advanced filing, even outside of the election period, several months before the actual campaign period, they are not yet considered candidates and they are candidates only at the start of the campaign period, which is 90 days. Uh, for national and local for national positions and 45 days for local positions the problem uh, madam chair your honor is that during the period of the filing say for example the filing of the candidacies from october 7 to 15 of 2024 as an example upon the date of the filing they are not yet considered candidates and all their expenses will not be reported to the commission election and will not be included in the source so you will see right left and right those who are already appearing in on television on radio and, and newspapers and all of these expenses are not yet covered by by any uh, any law and in fact the power of the comic will only have to start 120 days before the election which is more or less january of the year of the election that is a problematic situation the magindano massacre happened in 2010 during the filing of the candidacy when the comic does not have the power yet we cannot put any, by, any place uh, under commonly control at that time yet. And anything can happen during the period of the filing, after the filing, and uh, before the start of the campaign period, 90 days for national and 45 days for local. So uh, with your kind indulgence, Madam Chair, I think we have to start first amending the provision of 9369 pertaining to the status of persons uh, who filed their candidacies ahead of the campaign period. Yes, that's right. Uh, we uh, recognize that uh, the Peñera ruling is a major stumbling block in enforcing the law against premature campaigning. With the proposed amendments, for example, um, in uh, the omnibus draft proposed by myself, Article 9, Section 95, would that be sufficient to make the law enforceable again? Um, in which case, the next question would be, how do we distinguish between premature campaigning and mere expression of opinion? We need to plug the uh, loopholes adequately, but uh, there are clearly great difficulties in all of this. Indeed, uh, Madam Chair, you, you are correct. It's very difficult to distinguish whether it's campaigning or not. It will depend on a lot of uh, evidence to be presented before the COMELEC. Section 80 of the Omnibus Election Code was practically amended by yes. the Pinera doctrine. By the Pinera. And uh, so, uh, if, just in case, based on Assuming the... Assuming that we are able to pass a law in time for 2025, uh, what form should it take such that the loopholes are plugged, as uh, you said, um, these um, issues are not so clear cut? Just like what uh, we are going to do with the Barangay and SK candidates. They will be filing their candidacies, Madam Chair, by July 3 to 7. And therefore, we are considering them already as candidates from Regardless the date of the, of the Peñera ruling. Because our interpretation, Madam Chair, is that the Peñera doctrine is applicable only in automated election, not in a manual election. That is the loophole, and therefore, we will consider... Our decision, Madam Chair, is let them go to the courts, uh, simply because... Um, uh, it will be practically abused and the COMELEC will be rendered inutile uh, if we will not be able to implement the law. So uh, we would like to announce to everyone that when they file their candidacy by July 3 to 7, they are already considered candidates and they will be charged under Section 80 of the Omnibus Election Code. Very clear, Madam Chair, Your Honor, is the ruling of, of the Supreme Court in Piñera that mm -hmm. they interpreted 
the Supreme Court interpreted the provision of Section 15 of Republic Act 8436 as amended by 9369. Therefore, 8436 and 9369 is the automation law, not applicable for a barangay and SK elections. Okay. Uh, you're preaching to the choir. I'm all for it. Pero sigurado ko, may basag ulo dyan. Okay, I guess uh, that's a tricky part, no? The premature campaigning versus the uh, clear um, expression of opinion. The other issue that, of course, comes to mind is the issue of uh, technology and uh, what we can actually do, uh, both in the legislature as well as the commission, to regulate political campaigns over the internet and social media. Um, do we actually have the capacity to regulate such campaign? How, how do we intend to regulate the same? Right now, it's only official websites, as we know, that uh, need to be registered. And uh, given the plethora of platforms and uh, um, other uh, media online, um, I am wondering if there's a practical way to uh, sort all of this out and do this. And, uh, of course, uh, everyone else is welcome to uh, butt in and uh, better yet contribute to this discussion, which is tricky, not only here in the Philippines, but I think globally. Madam Chair, uh, before I respectfully will uh, request our Education Information Department, may I... Uh, uh, please inform the commission, the, the body that indeed it's very difficult to uh, not only to monitor but likewise to supervise and uh, even to control the social media uh, for purposes of the campaign simply because if we wanted to punish uh, criminally those who will be uh, violating our uh, the social media regulation, it will be very difficult because criminal law is always uh, territorial in character. And it may happen that the site, website, or uh, any social media uh, informations will be coming ab abroad. And so we will not be able to punish them. Uh, mahirap, nap napakahira po. And uh, may I please, uh, Your Honor, with your kind indulgence, and uh, ask our Education Department uh, Director, Director John Rex Lojanko. Good morning, Your Honor, with your permission. It is indeed a very difficult and tricky situation that we are facing given the technology, that uh, technological challenges that the social media are presenting, Your Honor. Uh, the COMELEC made efforts to register, as you had mentioned, the official verified websites, accounts, and social media accounts, not only for purposes of regulation and monitoring, but already giving incentives. We are including them in our e-rally platforms, sort of enticing them, all of them, all of the candidates to register so that we'll be given that, that privilege. Unfortunately, Your Honor, uh, the aspect of monitoring regulation presents a very difficult situation to the Commission. We have a limited number of personnel to actually do this, and I, I think all agencies globally are facing these challenges if we are indeed to implement a monitoring system. Masyado pong malawak at uh, free yung internet community. At isa pa po, one thing that we notice, Your Honor, despite having registered their verified official accounts, we can observe, readily observe pseudo accounts pertaining to some other people, not official accounts, and yet doing practically the same thing, Your Honor, campaigning and, and endorsing all these things. Hindi lang po yun, aside from the, these parts, there are also pseudo uh, advocacy organizations that are doing campaigning on the sides. Masyadong free po kasi yung social media natin that anyone could claim na advocacies, free speech, and yet it's practically campaigning your honor. They're doing everything it's sort, short of uh, campaigning directly for the, for the candidates. That's why your honor, if uh, for the monitoring part, the difficulty, the budget, the equipment, most especially the personnel. Also, Your Honor, we find... I understand. I mean, these are admissions that we make at the outset, but at the same time, uh, what is important is to find the uh, solution out of this, albeit uh, an entirely unsatisfactory and incomplete solution, but uh, we need to resolve these issues somehow. Um, what has been done, by way of example, with the MTRCB, for example, uh, given the... Uh, the great number of social media, cable, and other content has been to uh, allow 
uh, the MTRCB um, to act on uh, what is it called? Notice and takedown. Uh, the system that's being encouraged in Europe is notice and takedown. That once a report is made of an unsavory, in the case of M M MTRCB, or uh, censorship, uh, liable or banned material, um, the uh, the board is allowed to go forward and uh, notify that uh, account owner and take it down. So it's notice and take down. But this is on a randomized basis, uh, depending on who reports. And uh, perhaps MTRCB will also be given, uh, following the uh, recent discussions, the um, power motu proprio to notify and take down on their own, even without a complaint. I don't know if that is what we need to do, given that, like you said, there's no capacity to be watching every single platform 24-7. Uh, uh, it's absolutely impossible. The same uh, has been uh, the issue with censorship. Baka ganun na lang, yung uh, random checks based on complaints that have been entered or on the uh, motto proprio observation of the board. Ah, hindi ko alam kung gano'n na lang tayo dahil uh, yun nga yung malaking problema. Yes, uh, Attorney uh, Rona from Lente, please. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, we we have a proposal. We did a media monitoring in the last 2022 elections and we found out po na the official uh, online accounts of our candidates, wala po masyado disinformation or the hate that we see online but it is in the affiliate pages that we see most of the abuse happening. Yes, of discrimination. Course, of course. Everyone keeps their official oh, uh, uh, assets clean. Our proposal, po, uh, Senator Marcos, uh, Madam Chair, is to hold the online companies accountable. In the UK, for example, there is an online safety bill which provides that uh, online media companies which don't remove right away content which uh, pushes for abuse or discrimination, they will be fined uh, by the yes. um, agency. Yes, uh, that's correct. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the European and uh, now the UK as well are uh, using the tripartite approach with the platform involved at the outset, but we already know how uncooperative those platforms have been uh, historically and presently. Uh, there's that, the issue of the platform, then the regulatory bodies here in the Philippines. So I suppose uh, Comelec will have to seek the help of uh, NTC and the rest, um, and including MTRCB when it ob involves uh, obscene and other material. And thirdly, Obviously, there should be sanctions against the individual or owner of the account. So, tatlo yun eh, di ba? Sa European style. Yes, yes, Your Honor. So, there's a need for a multi-effort, uh, multi-agency effort, including the private telco companies to address more uh, disinformation, including the online uh, media, online social media companies. Yes, so, uh, I don't know. Uh, is that uh, the... Uh, uh, are those efforts within the great scheme of things? And dami dami ng trabaho ng Comelec. Uh, are we going to lumber ourselves with that? Because uh, the uh, social media and internet campaigning have become so uh, critical in uh, elections, even local elections, that uh, we have to find some way of uh, getting a handle on them. Paano kaya yan? Uh, it's a problem everywhere. Uh, we're not the only ones struggling with it. Yes, uh, Attorney Gilarbal. Madam Chair, thank you. On the matter of monitoring, which is perceived to be difficult, actually, if the rules are clear, the political parties will monitor their comp uh, competitors. It's the experience we have in the advertising industry. The competitors monitor their competition. So in this case, the political parties will monitor the other. That's going to be a natural course of things, Madam Chair. They're, uh, they're the group at uh, greatest interest uh, to uh, report. So definitely the uh, political parties will be monitoring their opposition no? very closely and uh, much more assiduously than we would ever do. Yes, Mr. Nick Dow, please. Yeah, just, just to add to what Tony Lerbal mentioned, you know, um, uh, in the self regulatory uh, environment of the advertising and the media uh, and the broadcast industry, the competitors is the one who report. But there's also a system of uh, regulating, and that the system of regulation has a uh, 
a, a quasi-judicial body that, that uh, rules on this. So I think the uh, a quasi-judicial body, in the case of, for example, in broadcast, the KBP does that. People, com uh, competitors complain to the KBP and KBP uh, makes a ruling. In the case of uh, advertising, there's a body called ASC, Ad Standards Council, where competitors complain against each other and the ASC will rule against, uh, well, uh, uh, on, on, the, on the complaint. So in this case, uh, uh, I, I um, uh, echo what uh, Tony Rabal said. Uh, the political parties are, are, the best, uh, are in the best position to monitor. Uh, the question there, who do they report to? I think there has to be a, a body that will receive these complaints. I guess at Comelec would be the... Yes, the, I suppose the, they would have to tell the IT department of Comelec. Right. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, I, I think that's correct. I think at the end of the day, the opposition is always the uh, uh, most reliable reporter of uh, the uh, violations of the other side. So, uh, Commissioner Bulay, please, any suggestions? Thank you, madam. I've been hearing the the suggestions which are also very much on point. One is the COMELEC has the power to appoint during the election government and private agencies which, who can help us. So that takes care of a little bit of those things. Number two suggestion from the ground, Madam, is the ads that appear for a certain candidate is presumed to be theirs. So basically, uh, is presumed to be theirs. So basically, they are obliged to report this also. So aside from uh, subject to uh, confirmation. The, ads, the official ads of the candidates, you mean? Are presumed to be their doing. Their doing. Yes, correct. Whether what platform it appears. So basically, they're also on the lookout. So whether that is... Uh, a thing that will help us monitor more, aside from the opposition. That is what that is the suggestion from the field's That's personnel, madam. I, I don't quite understand the ads. The official ads have never been a problem, uh, as I recall. The official ads are always uh, quite uh, anodyne and inoffensive and basically talk the uh, qualifications of the candidate without... Uh, uh, accusing, um, you know, uh, the opposition of salacious or other uh, um, unpleasant, um, uh, corrupt behavior. Usually naman yung, yung ads medyo matinu naman ang itsura eh, di ba? Uh, so why would we uh, uh, focus on the ads? I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Outside of their official uh, registered ad page. Because, madam, if you're saying that wherever the ad occurs, it is presumed to be pero hindi the candidates presumed to be benefited and being promoted. Okay, uh, okay, uh, I have uh, personal uh, personal knowledge of this because I thought it was most bizarre that the opposition, for example, in the last election, was buying ad space in my. Um, in my vlog, for example, simply because my vlog was rating so highly. But we were lambasting them in the vlog. Pero bumibili sila ng ads sa amin. They didn't own us. They were just uh, working by algorithm. Maybe they had a very lazy ad agency. I have no idea. But uh, they were advertising on a vlog that was attacking them. So... I don't know what that means. I mean, uh, palibasa nag-advertise sila sa akin noon, di ibig sabihin na responsible sila para sa sinasabi ko. Kasi binabanatan ko nga sila eh. I, ang, ang, ang habol lang kasi nila views eh. Wala silang pakialam kung uh, what, pro or against. They just want to access. Case. And I guess there's also the perverse notion that anyone listening to me uh, baka may madali sila. Maybe they'll be able to get someone. I don't know. Publicity, good or bad, is still publicity. Pero how do you do that? Kasi yung ads nga nila, bumibili sila kung san-san eh. Mag magugulat ka. Ako, nagulat talaga eh. And also, madam, it will have a bearing on our cases for... Laking uh, utang na loob ko siya, sir. Thank you, sir. So, Salamat, sir. Thank you. With that, I would like to take Thank a you, second to, to, to Thank make... You, a plus or minus percentage, Salamat, sir. not the exact one, uh, um, on the amount of computation, madam. Okay, 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 so because the second okay, violation okay. would 
Okay. Would would uh, take, take him out yes. of the running okay, already? Okay. Let's continue. Yes. So more you mean if you uh, the second violation uh, this, uh, disqualifies them perpetually. And the disqualification, you know, madam, is fine. They already inside the office of the world out of personal the development lending and corporate rule one seven four two. Now, if they declare and they commit mistake on the computer. Yeah, but Santos is it Barangay two five two is fine. So it's better so then, to file the recorder. Just pay the fine. So so it's like that. Thank you, Madam. Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. I think that's an interesting proposal, though, and it's proven uh, very, very uh, effective, as uh, observed by uh, Attorney Hularbal. Toto, oh, there's uh, the uh, ad boards have been uh, very uh, effective in uh, cleaning up everyone's act, uh, essentially. So um, perhaps that's uh, something that uh, could be explored. Na yung political parties. Um, will also be the vigilantes for their own uh, for their own uh, ads, and then uh, make uh, the the procedure very very clear. San sila magre-report sa komile kung sa IT ba kay Director Laujanko. Tapos ano yung procedure? Uh, sino yung uh, sino ang sasagot at ano yung penalties? Kasi nga mabigat naman yung maging criminal kagad at sa kayong second violation eh magkakalokaloko pa sa computation. So I guess these are ideas that can be explored, Chairman Garcia. At the same time, of course, enjoining the uh, the tele telecoms and the uh, the uh, uh, NTC and the uh, DICT, DOST, all of them to join the fray with Comela because you can't do it alone. Chairman Garcia, please. Yes, Madam Chair, with your kind indulgence, for the information of everyone so that we can put this in the right perspective. At any given election, especially in a national and local election, there will be at least 48,000 candidates in all the positions. That's very small. If there are a lot of candidates, more or less 50,000 candidates. If these candidates will have 10 accounts, whether official or unofficial, try to imagine almost half a million accounts will be monitored by the commissioner elections on a daily basis. Not only for the national positions, take note that we cannot we cannot promulgate the laws only for national position, but also for local candidates. We still have, and likewise have to monitor local candidates. So more or less half a million accounts will be monitored by the commission on elections. Yes, precisely. That's why uh, uh, that's why the uh, the recommendation is uh, perhaps to consider na nga yung uh, political uh, parties, the uh, the different political parties uh, be pointed towards a uh, group in Comelec where they can address their complaints. Kasi hindi na mamamonitor, miski sino niyan eh. Sobrang dami na ng social media. Yes, Attorney Hularbal, I think you uh, had a suggestion. Ma ma Madam Chair, uh, just to add to the suggestion a while ago about the presumption, uh, the candidates, the presumed advertiser. There's something similar we have in the advertising industry that when a brand is being promoted, it is presumed to have been a promotion of the brand owner. So if the brand owner does not take any action against the advertising material, uh, they get penalized. So in the same way that if the candidate sees an ad that he has nothing to do with, but is promoting him, he will take action against that very ad. Otherwise, he would be subject to penalty. Yes. Uh Sorry, but I have to protest against that, Attorney Hularbal. Um, in many, many cases, um, we have some very rabid loyalists, fans, uh, supporters who are completely out of control and uh, will not even listen to us. Masyadong mapusok talaga yung iba eh, lalo na sa, kagsag, uh, sa kasagsaga ng halalan. Hindi mo talaga maawat eh. Kinakausap mo na na bawas-bawasan ng banat, wag nang ganyan, medyo na, nasa bastusan na yan. Hindi mo talaga maawat eh. So it's really, really difficult. Uh, lalo na sa lokal eh. Yung lokal ang pinaka-bloody. Um, kaya... I won't go if you penalize the candidate. In many cases, you have the candidate has no control over some of the supporters, talaga. 
Actually, Madam Chair, as a lawyer, the challenge is really the freedom of expression on political expression. That's the real challenge. Pero I think that's where uh, Attorney Rona's uh, concern with the platforms would bolt in. Kapag obscene, uh, scurrilous, uh, clearly salacious, and uh, 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 slanderous, siguro naman take down na ng, ng uh, platform yan. Ayan, ang labo talaga ng mga platform kung ano, they're, they're, they're very uh, discriminatory rin eh. So yes, uh, Director Laudjanko, yes, since Honor. all of this is gonna land in your guys' plate, <laughs> eh, siguro dapat ta kayo magsalita. There have been uh, several instances in the past, Your Honor, when, when uh, complaints not sort of the formal complaint, but that it was brought to our attention regarding the assiduousness and the, you know, the, to the point of being offensive. So we raised that to Meta and Twitter, and in fairness to them, they were able to take down after um, putting it against their community rules, not necessarily the election laws, but under their community rules. Okay, okay, lang. So, okay lang, Director, yes. pero I have uh, issues with all those guys too. They take down the ones they want to take down. They don't take down many, many others. I guarantee yes, you, Director Bagid. <laughs> yeah. Marami akong hugot dyan, malalim at malawak, promise. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. Uh, oh, Your Honor, uh, good morning to all. Your Honor, with respect to a person spending uh, without the authority of the candidate or political parties under the law, the, uh, they must secure first the authority coming from the political party or, or the candidate no, before they can spend. Thing. There's no such there, thing. There are gazillion... Uh, 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 Vlogs and websites and uh, yeah. all sorts of platforms. You can't you can't require them to do that. Yeah, that's why, mom, in our uh, freedom of expression, ngayon eh, kaya nga hindi nga pwedeng ganun eh. Mama, for I'm speaking for purposes of spending. When we compute their expenses based on the submission coming from the media or the candidate, we look on the authority of these persons, third persons, other than the candidate spending. So we look at the uh, the authority of these people. Uh, from the uh, candidate and the political party or party list group that they're the one authorized to spend for the candidate or political parties. So, as a rule, if, if somebody... Magulo rin yan. Magulo rin yan, I'm telling you. Kasi yung mga troll farms, they're entirely untraceable. And uh, you don't know where they derive uh, their financing. And as a matter of fact, each one of them will probably claim to you that uh, they are on their own and it's entirely a free enterprise. Honor, uh, if they be doing that without any authority, an election office can be filed against them because they have uh, 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 without any because uh, it will be unfair on the part of the, the, the candidate or political party to attribute that spend that data expenses uh, because uh, without without his uh, authority or honor. Parang mahirap din yan, ha, with all due respect, because kanya kanya uh, kanya kanya uh, vlog yan, kanya kanya website ang pipigilin mo. Di pwede, talagang ma mahihirapan kayo niyan. I, I, let's go muna to the area of trying to keep it clean, right? Uh, even before the expenditure. Um, I think um, there have been several good ideas already raised here. And I do believe that the example now of uh, censorable material um, in the MTRCB, as well as the very successful implementation of the ad board, um, of all their uh, different uh, uh, members, uh, I think we can take into consideration the uh, the setting up of a similar uh, uh, IT or uh, web-based uh, um, group in the Comelec Seguro by way of suggestion. And then at the same time also uh, signing the requisite MOUs with uh, the uh, government agencies involved and even the uh, and even the telcos and others who are involved. Pati mga platform, syempre, kahit pa paano, kahit hindi sila sumusunod, pipirma rin sila kunyari dyan. Kahit pa paano. So I think uh, that's probably an area we have to work on. Maybe at least may tatakbuhan yung political party, uh, kahit paano. And then, uh, yun, yung notice and takedown. I don't know if that's an option because that's exactly what uh, Mr. Nick Dow and uh, Mr. Attorney Hula Rabal are, uh, uh, are uh, doing now. Uh, and it's been effective for um, the KBP and uh, the uh, other groups. Yes, um, Madam Chair, definitely from the point of view of law, any 
legislation that will regulate social media will face serious constitutional challenge in view of the constitutional guarantee of the freedom of expression. And that why, that's why uh, when uh, during the time of uh, former speaker Pantaleon Alvarez, he sponsored a bill for social media regulation in the Philippines, and it never passed even the House of Representatives. That's right. And he was speaker then. Yes, Madam Chair. Yep. So I think that's really an issue. But once again, I mean, the right of one ends where the uh, the um, um, uh, ends where the um, the uh, duties also and responsibilities of others begin. No? So hindi naman hindi naman lahat ng uh, lahat ng uh, uh, bill of rights eh, talagang uh, uh, all you can. I mean. All these political rights uh, also have limits, no? So, kinakailangan siguro the responsible exercise of uh, a citizen's rights din, ano? So, eto nga. Uh, but there are examples, as I said, of self-regulation, of uh, monitoring and reporting by opposition political parties and so on. Kaya lang, gawa na lang natin ang proseso. The, I think I have two more issues uh, so that we can finish and round up our hearing and proceed to TWG at least on the topics raised. And firstly, there are various uh, already there are various loopholes in RA 11207 while we're in the subject of media regarding the uh, nefarious discounts in uh, political ads. Um, I think President Duterte had more than a mouthful to say about this, that there are reports that aside from published rates, there were secret uh, negotiated rates and uh, preferred rates for favored candidates or parties. Any comments from Mr. Nick Dow and anyone else from KBP? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I think uh, the whole uh, furor over the ABS uh, derived from exactly this issue. I understand, uh, Madam Chair. In fact, there, um, we attended the, the hearings uh, when the when the new uh, discount ra rates were uh, 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 were being discussed. No? Uh, the the uh, comp the problem with uh, Setting the, I mean, the setting of discounts is no problem. It, it, the, the discounts have been raised already. It used to be at 10, 20, 20 and 30. Oh, no. Uh, the discounts have been raised, but yes. the, the base rate. I understand. Kasi ang dami-dami ninyong rate, sa yes. totoo lang. Uh, yes, ma'am. May ma published rate, may negotiated rate, may right. preferential rate, may bulk rate. Yeah. The, so, the, uh, when you apply those discounts, tama naman yung COMELEC, talagang linagyan na ng, okay, 50%, oh, 40%. Yes, Ang oh, problema yung rate talaga yes. depende. The problem cited by a lot of the media companies at that time was, the, the, the you're right, there are public rates and they're the ones that are visible to everyone because these are submitted... Uh, in but fact, we all know that the published rates are never the rates that are actually yes, charged. Yes, and the, the problem naman with the negotiated rates. So, yeah, we, I mean, everybody knows about the negotiated rates. The problem with negotiated rates are, number one, they're not common to all. I mean, uh, to, to all. Uh, I mean, it depends on, number one, the volume of advertising uh, that, uh, that is bought. So, and it's, it's unique to every advertising agency. The agency... Uh, that represents the advertiser will negotiate their negoti their nego rates with each individual uh, platform, um, and these are not made public. And yes, but once again, uh, that prejudices someone who's not uh, close to Unilever or uh, uh, PNG. Yeah. So you will never access those preferred rates. The my my suggestion, uh, uh, that, that's that's why we had a, a problem. Uh, in the in the hearings before, because the nego rates are never published because they are they are very confidential to each individual advertiser. There will be a big problem in the in advertising industry if this were made public. Imagine if Unilever. Is there found a way to compel uh, through an NDA the disclosure of said rates merely to Comelec? Wait a bit. Even that, ma'am, uh, there will be a big problem because, among advertisers um, yes but the implementation of uh, these political discounts becomes farcical when uh, the base rates are secret and uh, obscure so papano ba yun 
<laughs> that was... Kasi walang may alam eh. Kasi Pestagal 50% ng 1 million. Yes. Oh, ganun. Even, even we do not know the rate of ABS, CBN, or GMA. Our competitors, we don't know the rates of our competitors. So you're saying that nobody has a right to know them? The, I don't think you can compel the advertising agencies because these are really very confidential rates. But these are, after all, at the end of the day, um, somehow there's a, there's there's a public service involved, diba? I understand. Can, are you saying that perhaps what we should do is just uh, have published open, uniform, political ad rates. Kasi kung ibabundle yan ng uh, malalaking uh, advertiser, iba ang rate. Kung iba yung advertising company, iba din ang rate. Kung in-house ang kausap mo, iba na naman ang rate. Eh, purus iba-iba yung rate. Eh, bakit hindi na lang across the board? The, well, the, uh, across the board for every network, ma'am. For it's, every it's, network. It's, uh, but, well, the network, I mean, the, uh, the rates... Hindi ko alam, I'm not no, no, that, uh, saying that... Kasi marami, there, there are so many that factors... That nakakainis na kasi yan eh. Parang na lang sinasabi na, ah, uh, we can't disclose, we yes. can't tell Comelec, we can't tell the other party. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, let, let me just express, my name, then maybe I, I can offer a solution later on. Uh, there, are, there are so many factors involved in setting rates. Uh, I mean, you, you cannot have the same rate, let's say, for... ABS and GMA because they have different ratings. Rate, as you know, rating points matter a lot. If you have a higher rating, you can you 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 tend to have a. In the last rating. election, it was just GMA and GMA. Of course. Well, the ABS also was selling, uh, ma'am. But that now because of they lost their franchise, the rates are much lower. Precisely because their their rating points are now much lower. So it's dictated by. But I, I think no, we understand that, but at the same time, we're totally confused by it, and I think it no longer follows the spirit and the uh, notion of the law. Yeah. No, the the compromise in the in the last uh, revision was there's a catch-all where it says that uh, in no case shall the candidate pay more than uh, its regular advertisers. Yeah, but well, it's not saying much. So, m maybe... That's not saying much because your published rates are outrageously high. They're sometimes 300% higher than what's actually paid um, in the ground. It's, the it's ground. been a struggle, ma'am. So my, my suggestion would be it, the, 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 the nego rate will be known by the, uh, by the agency. So it can be an, uh, an agent. In other words, uh, the, if you... If June, you, you're not telling me anything. No, ma'am. What I'm saying is, let's say if you use an agency... The agency should not use a, a rate higher than what they're getting for, for their regular advertiser. They have they, they, they are they have visibility over those rates. Yeah, but once again, uh, that's those rates are very very high. No, no, the, the nego rate. I'm talking about the nego rates, ma'am, that are known by the to the agency. I have no idea. This uh, this is not clear to me at all. Okay. Yes, somebody wanted to speak. Uh, Mr. Ray Lucas, our Please. executive director, ma'am. Um, mama, clearly this is a problem in the industry also. Um, yeah, because we have to. Ano mo, ang, ang problema dyan, this is you have your well. It's a very yeah. incestuous business. It's the advertising companies, the media outlets. Kayo kayo nag-usap be. Yeah. Pag hindi kami pag hindi kami kabahagi ninyo, hindi naman namin alam yung mga usapan ninyo eh. Kaya nobody knows what nego rates, what published. Yes. Yeah. They keep giving us uh, all sorts of rates. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, we have no uh, recourse yeah. but to respect every single rate even if it's 300% more. Yeah. Clarifying these issues, ma'am, I think is helpful. And I think this is the right approach uh, trying to look for a rate uh, that can be applied in a standard way. I mean, we don't need to, you know, uh, look for what should we, broadcasters and any other media should not uh, think, should not have to think what rate they should apply, should, you know, what's the negotiated rate. And, but there is also a difference between uh, commercial transactions and uh, political transactions. In the commercial transactions, of course, uh, there are many factors which come into play when you determine the rate, which may not be, uh, yes, but precisely, which, may, which may not exist yes, in we, the political rate. Yes, but precisely we're saying that the political rates, in as much as they uh, borrow from uh, public service uh, um, notion, uh, should not be compared to commercial rates. Precisely, that's the whole point of the law. 
That's right, ma'am. Uh, I think what we're looking for here is a basis for media um, to find a rate that can be standardized. I mean, that can be considered. What if it's pre-agreed upon? And you disclose to Comelec ahead of time what those rates are Madam, for Madam each Chair. outlet, at least national. Ma Madam Chair, may I suggest something? If they're pre-approved? Uh, that can be done. You know what's happening, of course, yes. is that less and less traditional media is being used by the politicians. It's as simple as that. We've all migrated to social media because it's so expensive. You know what's happening? Which also affects, uh, which, which also already affects the demand for traditional media. Kaya lahat ng local uh, radio stations naghihikahos, di ba? Yung talaga ang realidad. Nawala na yung tobacco ads, nawala pa yung political ads. Paano mabubuhay yan? Tama po. That in itself uh, uh, puts a control on uh, increasing rates of media. But again, uh, going to the point I was trying to make is that, uh, for example, uh, the approach that the committee is taking now, I think it's the right approach, is just we have to find the right solution. For example, uh, in the last version, um, we have, for example, removed the, in one of the proposals, removed the, the need for computing the average rate, uh, meaning hindi na po ngayon calendar, no? the past three calendars here. That makes it simpler to to compute the rates now. So that's a that's a move forward. So if you can have things like this, where it will be easier for us to compute uh, what the rate should be applied. Uh, when we say average rates, that's also very clear. Uh, pag pumunta tayo dun sa negotiated rates, dun po yung dumarating yung problem. Kasi what is a negotiated rate? And what is lower than the, what is the lowest negotiated rate? Because we know very well pag negotiated yun nga yun. That's why it's negotiated. Because it doesn't apply equally to everybody. It depends on the kind of business that they put in. It's the kind of uh, uh, conditions that the advertisement will be uh, uh, will be broadcast. Yung pong ganon. But there are improvements I think that we can still do. But in the case well, of... Well, I was going to say, uh, Mr. Huroga, very simply, any published rate, 50%, whichever is the lowest published rate, wala nang nego-nego, masyadong uh, magulo eh. Paano kung ganon? Okay. Any published rate, wherever you published it, wala nang negotiated, negotiated. Masyadong, uh, masyadong uh, malabo yun eh. Pero ang problema, magpa-publish kayo ng napakatataas naman. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Attorney Rularama. May bring a parallel. Uh, the industry, the broadcast industry at least, can come up with classification of its stations. And yes, and we can say that this group of stations cannot charge more than this. So that can be a subject of quote-unquote negotiation with Comelec before the election and say that these are going to be the rates, these are the stations affected by each classification, and it's in effect a nego rate with Comelec or the candidates. Yes, I think the local uh, area is uh, one place that uh, we can probably ka categorize. Kaya yon. Ang problema natin, the great overwhelming um, presence will be GMA, uh, in as much as they're the only remaining national uh, network. So yun ang problema, kasi the excuse cited many times by the previous administration is that um, given the number of political ads um laging uh, nababump off si presidente duterte diba that that do na, do na yung alitan and i uh, my family is also uh, very very aware of that having happened many times mababump off ka binayaran mo yung prime time tapos si papasok ka sa umaga ng sabado na wala naman nanonood ng television so parating nangyayari yon um ngayon that will get even worse. Kasi iisa na nga lang eh. GMA na lang talaga ang TV. So how do you avoid these things? So Chairman Garcia, Commissioner Bulay, please. Madam Chair, would like to offer a solution. Uh, 
the Republic of 9006 empowered the COMELEC to merely regulate media entities during the uh, campaign period. May we respectfully likewise propose that an amendment to 9006 or even in the proposed omnibus election, uh, revision of the omnibus election code, that the COMELEC likewise be empowered to regulate media agencies during the uh, election you're, period. You were saying that you're allowed to regulate right now. Under 9006, media entities only. Yeah. We should likewise be allowed to regulate media, uh, the uh, ad agencies during the election period. In the first place, that is provided for under Article 9C, Section ah. 4 of the Constitution. We, we should be em empowered by a law, although there is a provision in the Constitution. And number two, because if the, if, uh, and there should, the, the law should likewise say that uh, not only that the Comerec is empowered to do that, that the, the rate for non-political, the rate for political advertisements should not be higher than the rates for the non-political advertisements. You mean the basis for the discount yes. cannot be higher? Yes, madam. The yes, basis, madam. not the rate. Yes, uh -oh. madam chair. And so we the, give the commission the power to regulate ad agencies. So the basic rate for political discounts will not be higher than the regular than the reg than yeah, the rates for non political than the published than than the published than the non political than uh, the commercial rates yes madam chair kaya lang the com yun na ang pro there lies the rub eh. kasi the commercial rates nga are iba iba eh. meron mga secret negotiated may bundled rates may kung ano ang nung rates eh. but if for the comic will be given that authority to regulate the ad agencies then Kasi po hindi sila nagsasubmit sa amin, nagsasubmit po yung mga media entities, yung mga receipts, Kaya, yung mga okay. resibo. We will even compel and uh, these uh, ad agencies during that election period lang naman po. Uh, the power, uh, we will even compel them to submit everything to the commission. So yung bagay na hindi po nasasubmit sa amin, mapapasubmit na po sa amin ngayon. Yes, we can have a look at that. Um, surely there's really room for, there's really room for compromise. Eh? Magulo masyado eh. Yes, uh, Commissioner Bulay, please. Thank you, Madam. Uh, we can also benchmark on the taxes they paid monthly on these things. So if, now that the president wants digitalization full, so maybe perhaps BIR has the information of how much these agencies, these ad agencies, and these networks are paying on a monthly basis for the solicited ads. So that will form a good basis for across the board benchmarking of amounts. Thank you, Madam. I think all uh, all these suggestions um, are uh, meritorious, and I think we will also have to uh, put together some kind of uh, TWG once again, so that we can invite the KBP and the rest of the media, as well as those in charge of uh, campaign uh, ads and finance, to come to some kind of uh, working compromise. I don't think there's a perfect solution, honestly, but uh, I'm sure we can improve what's going on right now. The final item is really the increase of the uh, uh, per head per registered voter um, campaign expense. Right now, it's outrageous. No, we're all uh, agreed that it's uh, absurd at three pesos. I think during the 18th Congress, in the committee report, we said 50 pesos per registered voter. Maraming nagreklamo that it would only favor rich candidates. Um, and uh, yet, we all know that there's been a 300% increase um, in prices, in inflation. I mean, uh, just February, we had uh, very huge uh, inflationary uh, increases uh, since RA 7166. So um, the uh, question arises, since we're all agreed, whether it's COMELEC, whether it's the legislature and the candidates, uh, whether it's the um, uh, poll watching bodies, everybody is agreed that uh, three pesos is absurd. The question though is how much would be reasonable? By right, if you followed inflation, it's times 300, diba? Kasi yun ang realidad. Pero um, times three. Uh, by right. So if it's times three, if we say that inflation has uh, time, it's like times three, so three pesos times three, yun lang ba? Parang napakaliit naman ng nine pesos din. 
Kaya nga, eh yung 50 naman, para tayong tawaran sa bilasang isda, no? Eh, tapos yung 50 pesos naman na sinasabi noon, that was originally proposed, sabi naman nila masyado daw mataas yung committee report ko, yung 50 pesos. So, I actually don't know where to put it anymore. So, uh, there was some level of agreement that somewhere between 20 and 30 pesos para sa president and vice president. At which, nagreklamo naman yung mga senador, kahit naman daw sila senate, uh, kahit sila national office, hindi naman sila tatakbo ng president and vice president, and they're only one of 12. So, presumably, di divide by 12 yung gastos ng president and vice president. Ganun ba yun? Hindi ko nga alam eh. Um, yun nga, nasa tawaran na tayo. Everyone's agreed, itataas. Pero magkano itataas? Yes, uh, Commissioner Bulay, please. Thank you, Madam Chow. I was thinking more of exploring setting a threshold, not, not a fixed amount. So candidates can adjust their expenses just so they don't go over the threshold. So Does that work? It, it, uh, can you give me a simple uh, arithmetical example? During my confirmation hearings, Madam, Senator Drillon was asking me if 1,000 pesos per vote was fine because I was saying, as city prosecutor of Manila, I'm, I'm prosecuting these cases, and all of us are guilty of perjury because we said that this is a real expense, and actually it's not. So say, for example, Madam, uh, threshold of 300 for president per voter. So from one peso all the way to 300, there is still no violation. And so if, whether you're rich or poor, you have, you have a bracket. Yeah, but you raise the ante to 300. Yes, the threshold is the that's, same as the per voter. Because I'm trying Kasi to... Kasi pag minaximize mo yan sa 300, there will be candidates who are rich enough to come close to that amount. Yes, madam, but we face with the reality that elections are elections are for for rich people actually but the threshold will uh, operate at uh, exactly the same way as the maximum eh? at least for some candidates who are willing to lay out that much money um, they will no violation yeah function. but then that would be a uh, clear um, allowance of what uh, Senator Pimentel seeks to uh, prevent, which is only rich candidates are welcome. Uh, what, yes, uh, Mr. Hulok, please. Sorry. What, Madam, if, uh, because the question is how much do you need to wage a good campaign? Because if you know the trick, no, you are the then question, No, the question actually is what are the allowable maximums? Yes, because if you know how much you need, in order to wage a campaign, then you can compute back uh, how much, how what the what the limit uh, should be. I, I'm sorry, I don't understand that. For question. example, if uh, this, the if, reason being that if you speak to any candidate, you'll get a different answer, let, um, let, and let, you'll be shocked that in certain very very small municipalities, the going rate per head is much much higher than running for president. Yeah, well, what I'm, uh, for example, Madam. Uh, how much will you spend in order to launch a campaign, a reasonable campaign, yung wala yung mga under, uh, a really legitimate uh, campaign to reach the voters? What is that figure? So, Because if you have that figure, then you know more or less uh, what the, the threshold should be per voter. Let's, let's say you have 100. Let's no, say, I understand what you're trying to say, but honestly, it doesn't work so logically. It really doesn't work that way. There are some places where uh, um, the expense per candidate is outrageous. I will tell you very, very simply. Okay, in Ilocos Norte, where there are a lot of migrants to Hawaii, the barangay elections is pegged at dollar rates, okay? Not at peso rates. So, Kung inaakalan yung kuripot ang Ilocano, magugulat kayo sa boat buying ng Barangay Kapitan.
<laughs> Madam Chair. Nasasak ako eh. Chairman Garcia, please. <laughs> Perhaps at this point, even during the last, the 18th Congress, there was really a report by the Committee on Electoral Reforms, and uh, it did not pass through the plenary. Maybe we just correct merely what is provided for under 71. There, there is an unfairness in 7166, and let's analyze. For ordinary, for candidates without political parties, they are allowed to spend five pesos. With political parties, three pesos. Political parties, five pesos. For candidates for president and vice president, 10 pesos, without any distinction as to whether the candidate for president or vice president okay. belongs to any political party. one clear amendment. We should, yes, uh, Madam Chair, we should amend that in order to distinguish whether the candidate for president and vice president has political party or no political party because it's unfair. Those with political parties can can spend 10 pesos plus 5 pesos additional because of the, their, their, because their, their, their party is entitled to 5 pesos. Yes, that's right. Uh, not uh, unlike... Plus, uh, plus PNA. Yes, Madam Chair, so not it unlike... Always, uh, it always um, is unfavorable for independence. Ano? That's right, Madam Chair. So maybe if the amendment can be done, then the amendment is to increase the allowable expenses for candidates with no political parties, for president and vice president. Pero the uh, alternate argument was made naman during plenary na we are discouraging political parties when in fact we want to be better organized and uh, encourage the growth of political parties. Yun naman ang sinabi rin sa akin noon. Naalala ko yun eh. Kasi sinabi ko, hindi, kawawa naman yung independent, lugi. Eh, sabi nila, hindi, dapat pagtibayin yung mga partido. Just the same, Madam Chair, but the other candidates will still have political parties. However, it's a matter of choice whether a candidate will have a party or not. There are a lot of candidates right now, even candidates for senators with, without any political party. Tama. Kaya as a consequence, kung mapapansin natin, sa mga nakaraang alahalalan for president and vice president, wala tal uh, yung president lalo, wala talagang nag independent Kasi lugi ka eh. Although, it occurred na nga nung 2016 na naging independent dahil halimbawa sa NP, tatlo yung uh, sumabak na vice president. Lahat sila naging independent, di ba? Pero that uh, occurred as an accident, not by choice eh. By choice, lahat sila maghahagilap talaga ng partido, kahit anong partido, di ba? So how do we go from here? Uh, with, I'll just throw this to the TWG para wala na akong sakit ng ulo. Uh, bahala na kayong mag-calculate dyan. Uh, may parang may tacit, uh, may tacit consent no na somewhere between 20 and 30 eh, sa national. Tapos mag a tayo ng provision para sa Senate. Kasi nga, 1 of 12 lang naman, hindi pwedeng ihambing sa Senate, uh, sa President and Vice President. May tacit agreement na doon. Tapos there was a standing argument also na yung lokal mas mahal pa kesa sa national. Yun, I don't know if we wanted to make that distinction. Pero alam natin na sa ibaba, yan ang totoo. So, thank you very much, gentlemen. I'm going to throw this right back at you. Yes, Mr. Allegra, please. Madam Chair. Yes, I'm happy to hear from you guys. You've been uh, very patient and quiet all along. So, good morning, Madam Chair and everyone. Um, so, we, so we, I can't speak to the how much should be the amount for the, for say, president, in terms of campaign expenses. But what we can offer is information on how much is the value of 10 pesos in 1991 now, okay? So based on our estimates, there's this factor, that Madam Chair mentioned the three times three. So based on our estimates, the factor should be about 4.5. Yes, yes. So 10 pesos before, uh, so by the end of 2022 is worth 45 pesos. So going, However, ma'am, if we uh, bring it to February, the estimate is 48 pesos plus three pesos. For the, yes, for the 4.8. How, 4 so, 8. so, hindi. Uh, uh, so, yes. Times. The factor that should be multiplied to the approved uh, expenses per RA 7166 is 4.5 if you're using values as of end 2022, okay. and 4.8 if you're using values as of end February 2023. Okay. Ah. Tama yung 50 pesos. Swak yung 50 pesos ko, I'm telling you. 
Yeah, I wasn't wrong. I wasn't wrong. Based on inflation talaga and cost of living, talagang okay. nasa 50 pesos, di ba? Hindi but, talaga malayo eh. Pero ma'am, from the BSP's point of view, as we want to control inflation, by the end of 2023, we think inflation will be lower. So maybe when this discussion okay, is... Okay, I'm praying with you. <laughs> Thank so, you. So, Tama, tama. I uh, I'm in full agreement, but uh, uh, praying about the inflation. It will go down, but I don't know how much down. However, shortages in the offing. I'm just a disclaimer. Uh, we base our estimates from the data of the uh -oh. Philippine Statistics Authority. And should there be calculation methodologies discussed, we would defer to the Statistics Authority since they are the authority. Tama, oh, oh, naman. Yeah, sige. Attorney Ambatali. Yes, ah, PSA ka rin pala. Uh, yes, um, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, um, uh, <laughs> Your Honor. Yes po. Um, uh, yes, we are computing um, uh, um, uh, the con consumer price index and uh, we are um, recomputing sometimes, um, uh, especially for for the construction industries, um, to align it into the current price. So... Okay. Yun, so yun. can you put that on in writing Sige. in PSA at saka si Mr. Alegre yeah. at saka Director Tendenilla? Yeah. Can you put it on in writing? What 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 would be the rates that uh, we should follow? No, so that it helps me also in plenary because I said 50 pesos and they were all like, ah, it's too much. Everyone started screaming. But really, um, by definition, from 1991 to the present, it's uh, a lot. It's a lot more, and the uh, and the sum bandied about was actually justified. And um, uh, based on our calculation, Your Honor, um, uh, we have a five point five percent inflation, um, inflation rate year on year from nineteen ninety one to twenty twenty two. So uh, that's uh, basically the uh, the the data that we have. Thank you, Your Honor. And very underestimated kayo, ha, yung 9.3 na ipababa ninyo sa 8.9. Mga magic error rin kayo. <laughs> I cannot comment on that. <laughs> Debiru lang. Inaasal ko lang kayo. Yung unang number, nasa 9.3. Eh. Tapos ewan ko, bakit uh, na ipababa? Magaling. Okay. Baka po seasonally adjusted po yung ano. Um, we take into consideration the, the seasonality of the um, of the prices. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much to everyone. And yes, um, uh, for our finance guys, if you could put it in paper, on paper, just the uh, inflation rates that should be taken into account, we'd be very grateful because uh, that uh, justifies whatever increase we have in mind and makes everyone understand that it's uh, far, far uh, cry from 1991. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng COMELEC. Marami po tayong trabaho kayo na mag-TWG. Um, in as much as it's a uh, virtually 1,000-page document, umpisa na lang natin dito. We'll just parse all the sections so that we get somewhere. Uh, there are areas where there is um, almost universal consensus. And obviously, there are areas where we'll have to invent the provisions as we go along. Thank you very much.